the profound change in communications technologies, together with the growing role of the state in cyberspace, have generated a new market. A new political economy dynamic, which Ron Debert calls the cyber security industrial complex. Well, the interesting thing right now is that the same dynamics and preferences and uh, operational logics that surround the world of the Internet of Things and the personalized economy, the data economy that we live in, are almost identical to the needs and preferences and operational logics of national security organizations. So Facebook uh, wants to gather as much information about you, your social networks, your preferences, your movements, what you purchase, whom you socialize with, what your religious affiliations are, in order to push advertisements towards you and commodify all of that information to make money off of you. Uh, the CIA, the NSA, want to do the very same thing. And as a consequence, there are these mutually reinforcing uh, epochal forces, really, that are pushing in the same direction. It is the confluence of these two epochal forces that has generated a new market. A new market that has resulted from the convergence of the aims of internet companies on the one hand and state security agencies on the other. Their aims have converged over the need to collect, monitor and analyze as much big data and information from us as possible. It therefore shouldn't surprise us that we now have an entirely new range of companies that service both segments of this market. We can see this, for instance, in the case of firms producing biometric and facial recognition software. This has become a very lucrative and fast-growing market, dominated largely by Israeli firms, who sell their services and products to both government intelligence agencies and militaries on the one hand, and social media companies on the other. Companies make money off of both of them. So, for example, we now have facial recognition software technologies sold by these companies to both Facebook and the CIA. The same systems allowing for biometric identification sold to both government and private companies. It's the same market. That has important consequences because it, it provides an underlying monetary logic and dynamic to the uh, mutually reinforcing tendencies of these two social forces. Um, but also it, it actually accelerates and reinforces certain tendencies that policymakers have. Um, so they're now being uh, given or equipped technologies that give them capabilities they never before imagined. Cell phone tracking, social media monitoring, uh, manipulation of ideas through uh, political bots. Um, that we're, we're entering into this new territory of information warfare that is undergirded by a political economy dynamic that is um, reinforcing it all. Companies we tended to associate with wiring the planet and with connecting human beings are now offering products and services that not only curtail privacy and the flow of information, but that also enable policymakers to turn these wires into devices of surveillance, repression and even warfare. The confluence of these two historical social forces happening right now is breathtaking in scale and scope. And the dynamics they generate require us to pause in order to think about the historical significance. Because, as Ron Diebert argues, what is ultimately at stake is nothing less than the viability and future of liberal democracy itself. I think that at the very time that we're turning our digital lives inside out, we have the state watching everything we do. And that is important because it raises very significant issues around uh, civil liberties and the protection against the abuse of power. If you look at uh, 
the history of liberal democracy, at, at, at the heart of, of the evolution of this concept is restraint of power, usually through some kind of distribution of power and checks and balances. Uh, right now we have a, a really dangerous situation unfolding where we're handing over all of this information to the private sector, which typically is not held to the same accountability as our political institutions, at the same time that we're entrusting the security of the physical space that we live in to agencies that are artifacts of the Cold War that uh, typically are shrouded in secrecy and themselves lack political accountability. So we have this double blind when it comes to accountability happening right now that I think needs to be reversed if we want to protect liberal democracy.